short guide to the Assisted Decision Making Capacity Act 2015. What is the Assisted Decision Making Capacity Act? The Assisted Decision Making Capacity Act 2015 is a new law that comes into effect in 2022. Assisted decision making is commonly referred to as ADM. It refers to the structures that have been put in place to support a relevant person to make decisions where they may have difficulty in doing so. Who is a relevant person? A relevant person is a a person whose decision making capacity is in question or may shortly be in question in respect of one or more matters. That is, a person who may have difficulty reaching a decision without the support of someone. Or b. A person who lacks decision-making capacity in respect of one or more issues. Or c. A person whose decision-making capacity is in question, or may shortly be in question, in respect of one or more issues, and who lacks decision-making capacity at the same time, but in respect of different issues. What is decision-making capacity? Decision-making capacity is a person's ability to understand the nature and consequences of the particular decision to be made by them at a particular time, taking into consideration the choices available to them at that time. Under the Act, a person over the age of 18 is always presumed to have capacity. Decision-making capacity is a issue specific, b context specific and c time specific. A person with decision making capacity can a understand information relevant to the decision, b retain the information long enough to make a choice, c use or weigh up the information to make a decision and d communicate their decision. Sometimes this may be with assistance. This means, for example, that a person can have capacity to make some decisions, but may need support to make other decisions. Unwise decision. It is important to note that a person can make a decision that is perceived as being unwise or ill-advised. This may reflect a difference in values, goals and preferences between the relevant person and you. The decision may have adverse consequences for the relevant person, but it is still their decision and does not necessarily mean they lack decision-making capacity. Types of decision. There are two types of decisions that the provision of the Act apply to. These are 1. Personal welfare decisions. These include decisions related to the relevant person's health and social care as well as to accommodation, employment, education and social activities. Number two, property and affairs decisions. These include decisions related to the relevant person's property, business and or money matters. Generally, decisions relating to social housing provision will fall under the personal welfare category. As a housing practitioner, you may be involved in ascertaining whether a person has the capacity to make a decision or in supporting a person to make a decision. Decision Support Arrangements Under the Act, there are three types of decision support arrangements for those who currently or may shortly face difficulties when making certain decisions. These are 1. Decision-Making Assistance Agreement this is the lowest level of decision-making support and involves a decision-making assistant who supports a person in their decision-making process but does not make the decision for them. Number two, co-decision-making agreement. This is the second level of decision-making support and involves a co-decision-maker who supports the person in the decision-making process and makes a joint decision with them. Number three, Decision-making representative agreement. This is the highest level of decision-making support and involves a decision-making representative who makes decisions on behalf of a person 
by following the will and preference of that person. There are also two types of arrangements for people who wish to plan for a time in the future when they might lose decision-making capacity. These are, number one, the Advance Health Care Directive, and number two, the Enduring Power of Attorney. The Act recognises that a person's decision support requirements may change over time. This tiered system of decision support arrangements allows for the amendment, cancellation or replacement of one type of arrangement with another, depending on the person's capacity and needs. Decision Support Service, DSS Under the Act, a service has been set up called the Decision Support Service. The Director of the Decision Support Service must oversee and supervise the decision support arrangements mentioned earlier. This includes a. Being the Registrar for all decision-making agreements and supporters b. Monitoring decision supporters and c. Investigating complaints As a housing practitioner, you may need to contact the Decision Support Service to check if a person has a decision support arrangement in place or to check the register to verify the identity of decision supporters. What do you have to do? There are nine guiding principles set out in the Act which must be followed when interacting with a person who has or may have capacity challenges about a decision. These are number one, presume capacity. Number two, support the relevant person to make decisions. Number three, unwise decisions. Number four, do not intervene unless necessary. Number five, minimal intervention. Number six, give effect to will and preferences. Number seven, consider the views of others. Number eight, consider the urgency of the intervention. Number nine, use of information. As a housing practitioner, you must follow the nine guiding principles when interacting with people. Further assistance and information. If you need further guidance or assistance, please see the Assisted Decision Making Act 2015, the Housing Practitioner's Manual, available on the Housing Manual at www.housingmanual.ie. Further information on the Act can be found on the Decision Support Services website at www.decisionsupportservice.ie.